Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my talk is on the role of robotics in GI surgery. Uh, my only disclosure is I've, uh, uh, I serve as a um, uh, shareholder and founder of a cor corporation uh, designed to uh, develop minimally invasive robots. Uh, we're, we're not, we're preclinical still, so we don't have any, uh, any conflicts to discuss. So I was asked to talk a little bit about robotics and GI surgery. And at first I was going to uh, come up with a gee whiz bang um, slides of various robots and kind of all these new innovations. But I thought that wasn't going to be terribly useful because honestly what we have now is one robotic surgical system that's FDA approved and that's the Da Vinci system. And so what I wanted to do um, uh, following some of the uh, statements that Sages has put together, including the, the Da Vinci statement by Tavik uh, and some other statements that are included in your, in your uh, course material, to talk specifically about where Da Vinci fits in general surgery. What many of us, I think, forget is some of the very first operations done uh, with the Da Vinci in the U.S. were, in fact, in general surgery. Uh, da Vinci was originally developed uh, for cardiac surgery, uh, but Da Vinci uh, quickly uh, moved into the general surgery market uh, and leaders in, in, in the surgery back then like Garth Ballantyne and others published some of the first series of uh, general surgical applications. Um, so w Da Vinci is really not a robot, we all know that, it's a computer assisted telemanipulator. Uh, it, the computer enhances the interaction between the surgeon um, and so it allows uh, more degrees of freedom than straight sticks laparoscopy. Uh, I think the advantages of uh, of the minimally invasive surgical approach plus the, uh, plus the da Vinci uh, dexterity really I is a way to get people who would otherwise not be able to perform uh, complex laparoscopic procedures to do them in a minimally invasive way. So it's enabling technology. So the da Vinci system uh, started off, as I said, in 2000 and, and then quickly uh, in 2006 they went on to uh, the S version, uh, SI, uh, SIE, and now uh, the XI version is out. The evolution of the robot, um, I think, um, uh, follows the trends. Uh, as we know, in, in, in the mid-2000s, the robot was used mostly by urologists and gynecologists, but now we're very much uh, interested in using the robot in general surgical procedures. Um, so what are the clinical applications? Uh, unfortunately, there's not a great deal of randomized prospective trials uh, to say that you should use the robot here because uh, it is significantly clinically better. There are some trials. So I think uh, expert statements like the SAGES uh, uh, Technology Committee statement and, and, and other uh, consensus statements help us guide the use of, of, of robotics in a responsible manner uh, as part of what we are doing as surgeons. So what are the limitations of the current uh, robotic system? Well, first of all, it's big. It lacks the touch feedback. It's got um, some limitations in terms of what kind of instrumentation you can use. Uh, there isn't uh, every single instrument you have in your laparoscopic repertoire is not represented in the Da Vinci repertoire. Um, and then uh, prior to the XI, multi-quadrant surgery was very difficult to do. You have to dock and redock. With the XI, some of this is solved. Although, um, if you've ever tried to do a, a, f a full four-quadrant uh, mobilization on the XI, uh, you do have to do a little bit of uh, uh, changing around of the camera. Uh, otherwise, you're kind of operating upside down. Um, overall, the technic uh, technically exceptional laparoscopic surgeon may derive uh, little or no benefit from robotic surgery. So I, I know that's a, that's a kind of a harsh statement, but it's true. If you can sew laparoscopically fast, if you are facile laparoscopically, then the robot does not provide added benefit in just about every operation that we do. But n very few of us can sew as easily or as comfortably as the robot. And there are ergonomic considerations. Sur surgical robots may serve as an enabling technology for many surgeons, allowing them to provide complex, minimally invasive procedures to a broad range of patients. The potential advantages of robotic surgery extend across many different surgical specialties. So let me just talk specifics. So foregut surgery is an area where I think complex laparoscopic techniques have to be uh, brought in. You have to be a, 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 comf a surgeon who's comfortable sewing laparoscopically. And that is a difficult, difficult thing to do. Uh, and many of us uh, find uh, that doing that with efficiency is not always possible. So 
operations involving the foregut, such as Nissen or Heller myotomy or gastrectomy, um, robotics uh, assisted, for instance, laparoscopic Heller myotomy, was first reported in 2001. And um, a number of studies, uh, some from Ohio states, showed that both laparoscopic and robotic techniques were safe and associated with low recurrence of complication. They didn't find a clear benefit, but when a larger study was performed by Horgan and then later on followed by a study by, uh, by us at the University of Nebraska, what we found is the perforation rate of robotic uh, Heller myotomies was actually lower than the perf perforation rate of laparoscopic Heller myotomies. It's one of the few studies out there, uh, both at a single series as well as the um, uh, large 12,000 patient review study that actually shows benefit of robot over l standard laparoscopic technique. I believe that is due to the fact uh, of motion scaling, uh, better visualization, uh, and I think that translates to operations such as the prostate where you just have to be um, in one spot working in, uh, very meticulously. Uh, gastrectomy is another operation where I think the, uh, the robot is uh, particularly useful. We saw uh, some video of it earlier today. Uh, it, it's very, very nice to be able to use the robot uh, to take down um, uh, vessels and uh, to take down lymph nodes. The visualization is wonderful. Uh, now, many of the Japanese studies will, will, will show you that uh, they can do a robotic D2 dissection uh, faster and um, with equal amounts of uh, uh, node harvest as uh, uh, one can use with a da Vinci. So, it's a, so there's no uh, actual benefit uh, other than uh, for those of us who are not as facile as, as some of our Japanese colleagues are in gastrectomy, uh, it may level the playing field. Um, as you can see, uh, Kim and others have compared the results of robotic gastrectomy with those of laparoscopic. Lymph node harvest did not uh, differ significantly. Robotic surgery was associated with less blood loss, however, and robotic approach was, was associated with a shorter hospital stay. Again, morbidity had ranged anywhere from 9 to 30 percent with mortality around 9 percent. So basically, the robots' outcomes, uh, patient level outcomes in gastrectomy may be slightly improved, but again, uh, that depends on your skill set. Uh, bariatric surgery is, is another area where robot has been advocated for use. Um, there's uh, wonderful data out in the literature to suggest that uh, robotic uh, bariatric surgery is possible, it's feasible, um, takes a little bit longer, and there may be some benefit in an ostomotic stricture if you do a purely uh, hand-sewn uh, robotic anastomosis. Uh, that's data that's come out uh, by um, uh, some, including Sanchez. Um, the data for case control studies show some benefits of robotic approach when compared to laparoscopy in reducing GJ leaks and strictures, as I mentioned, and, and length of stay may improve. Uh, the added degree of freedom uh, certainly allows you to do a better sewn anastomosis uh, up high or down low um, when you're using the robot uh, than straight six laparoscopy. Uh, hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgery uh, has had, I think, a new resurgence of minimally invasive techniques because the average hepatobiliary pancreatic surgeon does not uh, do advanced laparoscopy every day. A lot of their operation by necessity are open, but many of them have been able to move um, without sort of relearning laparoscopy into robotic surgery because the enabling technology of, of, of the da Vinci surgical system. Um, here's one study, a, a systemic review of literature was done by, by Berber uh, in 2010, and, and they looked at uh, 200 36 uh, robotic procedures in, in 219 patients for both benign and malignant tumors uh, with large tumor size and wedge resections was the most common procedure. Conversion to open was pretty low, so uh, morbidity was cited at 20 percent uh, of cases with most common being intra-abdominal biloma at 6 percent. No mortality was reported. And so basically that, that shows you that, that you can do that operation, uh, which is quite technically difficult uh, with, with success. Uh, robotic hep hepatectomy is feasible, as you see here. Pancre pancreatic resections can be done, um, and the outcomes are very similar to hepatic resections. Although no randomized prospective trials exist, uh, the feeling uh, by experts is that likely in this area it is indeed an enabling technology, and, and unless you are a very gifted high-volume laparoscopic surgeon, robotics may have a role in your, in your Whipple, uh, minimally invasive Whipple of the future. Uh, probably in, uh, colorectal is an area that's been most well studied and shows that um, robotic surgery is beneficial 
for low rectal uh, resections. Uh, length of hospital, say blood loss, and incision lengths were, this, uh, were, were the same. Robotic procedures were associated with increased, uh, slightly increased operative times, um, but there may be some potential benefits. Um, some studies have shown that positive outcomes for total mesorectal excision and, and cylindrical excision for low rectal cancers, uh, allowing you better dissection. Now, recently, the Roller trial came out finally, uh, suggesting that minimally invasive approach to rectal cancer uh, needs to be looked at again uh, because of some oncologic issues. But I think technically, uh, th the conversion rate from um, lap to open um, is a lot higher uh, the conversion rate uh, from robot to open. So technically, it remains beneficial. Uh, it remains beneficial probably because of uh, uh, 3D visualization, wristed instrumentation, um, but the short outcomes are similar and there are, of course, higher costs. Some early studies have shown trends towards improved um, uh, sexual and bladder function, uh, but there's not a great deal of evidence there. And utilization of the platform is thus rationalized on a case-by-case -case basis where I think if you need the extra expertise, th then I think you should turn to the robot. Uh, the use of robotic uh, platform is also extended to transanal surgery, and several authors have demonstrated safety in combination with transanal minimally invasive surgery, or TAMIS, and I think uh, there may be a role for the new SP system for TATA TME procedures. Uh, single incision cholecystectomy is an area where the robot dabbled in for a while, and I, I can tell you that uh, probably uh, this was not a, a the best use of robotic technology um, with increased hernia formation. So I would steer people away from using the robot for, for single incision cholecystectomy. Um, there are a number of ongoing clinical trials. I just told you about the roller trial that just came out. Uh, other trials are still ongoing, and, and Intuitive is actively supporting uh, Sage's efforts to do some uh, research in the areas of hernia and others. I didn't talk about hernia too much in this trial because I wanted to really concentrate on GI surgery, but apparently it appears that in hernia there may be uh, several uh, beneficial uses of the robot, especially for inguinal hernia uh, and um, uh, robotic uh, ventral hernia. With that, I want to conclude my talk uh, and thank everybody uh, for the, uh, the ability to present to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.